Okay, we've waited for six months for Eddie Jones to pick his starting 15. Are you surprised with what he's come up with? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> how do I answer that question? Dave Parecki. I am surprised Dave Parecki is starting a test match, man. I love an underdog, but he might be an under-underdog. <laughs> uh, a lot of big units in that in that pack. Uh, doubled up on the Hooper, went in for the, the, the two scoop on the hoops. He's got a Tom Hooper and a, and obviously Mikey Hooper. Um, yeah. What two captains as well, Slipper and Hooper? Do they now lead the team out together? I don't know. Do they hold hands and run out front? with the mascot holding the wallaby? It's it's very confusing, mate. Okay, but let's go back to uh, to the hooker, your favourite. His name again? Dave Parecki, mate. Did you know that Dave Parecki was also the starting hooker for Dave Rennie's final uh, for Dave Rennie's test against the the Inform France in Paris last year, when Australia led 29-23. With four minutes to go, and shocking defence allowed Pino to score, and they lost 30-29 in Paris, where the World Cup final will be played. How many of that starting 15 do you know is in this starting 15? Oh, no, no, no. You, you're going to have to give me that. Eight. Number. Eight. Eight! Five of the pack, and three in the backs, and among the backs, there's several not available mm. because of injury. So he's very much gone Who started with... a tight end in that, in that match? Was it Tupac? Uh, Tupo started. Yeah, okay. Tupo started. So it, would be, it, would be, it would be six in the pack then. Six in the pack. And then uh, among the backs, obviously, he's gone with uh, Quade Cooper's back from injury. Oh, I love uh, that. Bernard Foley was the, was the 10. Uh, and he's changed the back three uh, combinations. Your mate Tom Wright's made it again. I mean, between, between Parecki and Tom Wright, we're looking at the Randwick 15 there, mate. I don't know. I don't know. But if, but if you think Eddie Jones comes in, Dave Rennie got pillared. For, uh, for what he did, yeah. even though there were some very, very narrow defeats, one of them being that 30-29 against France. Yeah. Uh, but if Eddie's effectively picking six of the eight forwards that Dave Rennie picked, he wasn't getting his selections very wrong, was he? No. Well, I mean, Dave Rennie, like I told you, is a world-class coach. So, <laughs> he uh, just didn't get the results. What was Dave not getting right that Eddie can get right? Yeah, I think, look, we, we know the history of Eddie Jones, mate, those half-time adjustments he makes and his... His ability to pick up a little nuances in the game and tweak things in game, I think, makes the Wallabies immediately more dangerous. All right, so when I look at this, this team at, at first glance, I think most South Africans who haven't followed Super Rugby as well, uh, Super Rugby Pacific, would say they look at Parecki, Frost, who's Tom Hooper. It's, but these guys have played, except, yeah. with the exception of, uh, of, of Tom Hooper. They've all been playing. They've been playing uh, Rugby Championship. They've been playing end of the year tour. And that seems to be the nucleus of the, of the squad. And, and this is a kind of pack that really kind of gave it to us in Australia in the last two years. Yeah. Um, so not to be underestimated, they have, do have big units. And what they have brought in, he started on the bench. That's when he made his comeback to the Wallaby squad. Uh, Will Skelton, Larry Shell's inform big beast of a lock. He's starting uh, alongside Nick Frost. So they've got some... Big units, back five big units. Oh, 100%. Frost is 120 plus kilograms. Hooper's 120 kilograms. Richie Arnold, who's going to make his debut off the bench, was doing good things in France. These, these are not, I mean, yeah, he's, he's got something to work with there. It's just, uh, it's it's quite a big call to pull pull that team together at Loftus Fastfold and win this weekend, yeah. I think. Yeah, no real surprises then in the pack mix. We always, always knew that Nick White would start because of his experience and the way he gets under... Uh, our skins Love and, and Quade Cooper is, is their best Fantastic 10 that they've got. Uh, but Vuni Valu. Vuni Valu? Vuni I love that show. Yeah, as a it was kid. great. Eh? Yes. Vili Vali. So Lucia sits He's 100 kilograms. He's okay, but now unit. Eddie Jones has a specific type of win that he likes to pick. And, yes. and in, invariably, they're big island winners. Yes. Uh, if you look when he when he coached the Wallabies in two, uh, from 2000 to 2003, yeah. he had Lottie Takiri and Wendell Saylor. Those were his go to guys. Yeah. This guy was in Dave Rennie's group, and he, got, he only got three minutes uh, in all the time. He was he had injuries, but he, he carried a lot of tackle bags. Immediately, Eddie Jones identified him as the guy that you want to play against. Uh, a team like South Africa. And we also obviously know what's on the left wing with Marika. Uh, he's proven himself time and again. Mm. So where do you see the deficiencies in this in this Wallaby starting 50? Yeah, I just think, so I, I'm obviously a huge fan. I, I believe size does matter on the rugby field and I like big backs, but the way teams defend now with the, with the back shooting up to catch the ball carrier at the time that the ball arrives, I worry about outside backs that are big like Vili Vali because You've got to track back and reload on defense and get ready for the next phase. Little backs are suited to that sort of defensive skill. I, I, I see his value in terms of the high ball and a big unit that can, that can uh, look after the wide breakdown, but 
I want to see what happens on defense with big guys like that. Obviously, it's also a team that doesn't have a lot of um, continuity. They haven't played together a lot before. So you've got four new caps making their test debuts, and then you've got some guys that have maybe not played a lot of rugby together for the Wallabies. So it's going to be interesting to see how much familiarity they have. And the approach of Eddie Jones to Dave Rennie. Uh, educate us here on how different you think the, the game plan approach will be. Yeah, I'll be shooting a bit blind. I think, I think Dave Rennie was very focused on on brute force and physicality and getting the Wallabies to be edgy. And I think he achieved that to some extent. I think Eddie's going to be cleverer. I think there's going to be tactical wrinkles in there that make the box think. I think he'll have looked at how South Africa plays and he'll have some ideas around that. Um, and I think he'll ask questions that maybe we haven't really had to answer for a bit. So it's, uh, I'm very keen to see what happens in the second half when we go from uh, Stevie Kitsoff and Franz Malhaber to Tom De Toy and, uh, and Vincent Koch. And their bench comes on who we don't really know from a bar of soap and how he maneuvers us on that because he's obviously up front you look at you look at that team and you go he's picked physical guys he wants to batter us but i doubt whether that's the way eddie's gonna go well he all the talk that's come out of australia reading the sydney morning herald and the australian uh the the scribes that are over here have said that they're going to play uh, a fast-paced game. They're going to try and run this. The, the, the pace of the game is something they believe we, we're not used to because of the URC mm. and playing in Europe. Uh, but they're playing at altitude and uh, altitude is a factor. Exactly. Uh, especially in a test match when you've arrived here on the Monday and you play that last 20 minutes uh, is going to be telling. Mm. And we've seen teams come here before, especially mm. from Australia and New Zealand, and try and play this fast-paced game, get into a 15, 18-point lead, and mm. actually lose by 20 points mm. because the legs were gone in the last 20. Mm. So he's spoken that, but then he's also said uh, the key is to play the game uh, close to the opposition's goal line. And he doesn't really care how they get there, mm. whether they hoof it upfield, uh, whether they mauled it upfield. Uh, so he's kind of really given away nothing. He's just, he said the principle remains the same. If you're 20 meters from the opposition trial line and you got the ball, you're in a better, you're in a better position than they are. Spot on. So, um, spot on. The I bottom line though, the bottom line is he's got Tom Wright at fullback and South Africa can win this game by just putting the ball in Tom Wright's hands as often as possible. He will make bad decisions. I know you're not a Tom Wright fan, okay? It's a uh, mess. And you may be right, but <laughs> <laughs> you may not be wrong. <laughs> but he's, he's, he's actually had some, some fairly decent Mate, games. Come on. Eddie loves it. Come him. on. Eddie said he can become come one on. of the best in the world. Mate, best what? <laughs> no. Well, no, mate. Look, I've told Eddie as much, not that we mates, but I've said it to him in an email that I don't think that guy would make a Curry Cup team here. I, I don't and he know. never responded and to you. And he said that. to me, yeah, he literally did not reply, so. Well, you say, he said to you what? No, 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 no. <laughs> and then obviously, uh, Hodge is a guy I like, so something to think about there with this Wallabies team is that they've got uh, Nicky Wright, uh, Nicky White, um, Quake Tommy Cooper. Tommy Wright. <laughs> Quake Cooper and, uh, and Reese, who can all kick. Okay, now Reese Hodge, he's played 10, he's I played like him, 15, mate. he's I played like 12. Him. I like him. He's 12 his best position. Uh, look, I don't know. I, 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 I think Reese is a guy who could play outside centre, but then I think I'm very much in the minority there. Um, you just like size. I do like size. I like guys that have got a, a bit of versatility. Like Lakanya Om is, is a big unit, good over the ball and can kick. And Reese Hodge, to some extent, can do those things too. So I, 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 would, I would look at a guy like that at 13, but I think he adds massive value at 12 as well. I'm not sure he's the sort of target setter that a Damien Delendi is, but he does add some tactical value. I think on balance, when you look at the side, you don't think you're not going to quake in your boots. But then let's also go and look at their results. The core of this uh, match 23, mm. they've beaten the All Blacks. They pushed France. Uh, yeah. they, were, they were six points up with three, three and a half minutes to go. They've beaten South Africa in... Uh, in Australia quite convincingly. So let's not be too dismissive of it. No. And I think they will be in better shape because of the unknown Eddie Jones factor. Yeah. But also Eddie doesn't want to come to South Africa, smash the box at Loftus, beat the All Blacks, and suddenly the Australia goes into this World Cup and there's a lot of fanfare. I mean, I think he's got a bit of a long to, longer term view. So this I, is about- I don't know, he, he said they're coming for a smash and grab. Yeah. Eh? Consistent yeah. with our country, so they're in. They win, they win in South Africa. He doesn't want to lose his first test. He did last time in 2000, his first ever test. Uh, in, 2015 uh, was, was uh, the score. 2015, Bob Skinstead scored the try. Brown van Straten did the rest. It's a turgid game. Uh, <laughs> but we only won by five points. I know. I was with the box at that time. We, <laughs> it was five points that were worth 50 points to us. <laughs> and then we went to Australia and we drew 40 all in Perth uh, against the same Wallaby side. Mate. So uh, all we had to do then was beat the All Blacks in Auckland and we forgot that cake. it was 
we forgot that it was Auckland. <laughs> and, and the All Blacks. And the All Blacks. <laughs> and at that stage, yeah. Jeff Wilson had gone on record to say that... Oh, he you shouldn't play. His holiday house, the guy had stopped actually working on it and said, <laughs> uh, you guys have lost three in a row. You're a disgrace. They are kind of down tools. No. So um, there's an interesting story oh, about that one as well, where um, in the change room in the huddle before, and Andre Fenta, who doesn't didn't really used to speak a lot, he said, like, you've got to be like a dog. You've got to go out there, you've got to mark your territory, you've got to piss on Eden Park, and we've got to show them that we're the boss, okay? And uh, and then he said, Quibus um, Fasak, he also didn't speak, he said, this is, we've got to hit first. They're under so much siege, uh, it's, and we were fired up. Eh? First try. We are fired up, and we went out there, and we were just pumped up, and then they hit the lights at Eden Park. <laughs> and it was just a blackout for about two minutes, and we watched this beautiful montage of <laughs> what makes New Zealand special as a country. And they ended up with this massive haka, and our guys were shivering in, in Eden Park's cold. And by the time they walked out, it was like a funeral procession. Uh, we kicked off. Uh, they kicked into our 22. Uh, first line out. Yos was playing the 75th test and, um, and Mark Andrews playing the 75th test. Chris Jack took a pop at Mark Andrews. I think Byron Keller took a pop at Yost. Uh, the referee said, calm it down. They won the ball and Harry Fredoon said to me, uh, it's going to be a long 80 minutes. He didn't say quite as politely and uh, they <laughs> and went on to comfortably beat us 26-15. And thanks to Brom's five penalties, we kind of hung in there. Uh, so yeah, uh, when we look at teams on paper... Where else uh, would you get this history lesson? <laughs> Anywhere on YouTube, the answer is nowhere. Yeah, this so it place. was one of those games I kind of stood wow. the whole 80 minutes That's next amazing. to Harry and just knew. Uh, win the game, we win the, uh, the Tri-Nations. Again, we'd also underestimated that flying from Perth to Auckland was the equivalent of flying from South Africa to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> it was a seven hour flight with a five or six hour time difference. Oh, glorious. So I think by the time we got a training session, it was Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> Glorious, <laughs> but uh, good to have Eddie back in the, in, oh, in the rugby it's championship. Amazing, and, and Quaid, it's fantastic. And Quaid, yeah, yeah. and I mean, and, and Quaid Cooper's got a fantastic record against the Springboks. Mm. Uh, it's the kind of team he he gets up for. Yeah, uh, record against the All Blacks not that good, uh, but yeah, I, I I enjoy him as a player. And I think him and Marnie Lebok, their natural attacking flair and style Great is going tool. to be it's going to be good for the contest, but the. Mm. The arena, a loftus fast fight, I've always called it the cathedral mm. of South African rugby, the best playing surface. Mm. Uh, and the one thing that the box, uh, I go back to my time when I was with the box, they get treated so well. Mm. They get treated like the home team mm. when they are in Pretoria. And uh, that fast playing surface, I think it's going to be a cracker of a test. Mm. Uh, I think we'll have too much for them because of the altitude. And they'll huff and puff at the end. But I'm, I'm confident the box will win this one. Yeah, I um, agree with that. And what else do you agree with? I'm going to say that the box are going to win this. Um, I was quite bullish at the start of the week. I was leading towards 9, 10 points, but I think it's going to be a little bit close. So I'm going to say box by 6. Box by 6. Uh, and give me a score, mate. Oof, mate. I'm going to say we're looking at the high 20s for Australia uh, before the spring box. So let's say 28, 22. 28, 22. How many tries will they score? And what oh, will they mate. Score now you're asking me too many. 3 to 2? <laughs> and who's going to score How 28 much points? Is this? <laughs> I can tell you it won't be boggy. <laughs> Looking at the box setup, uh, any players you'd like to see in this test match that aren't playing? Mate, I would love to see Andre Joubert. He's one of my favourites. <laughs> I'd love to see him with the ball in his hands again, mate. The Rolls Royce is yes. back. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how, how this new look combination goes against Eddie and what plans Eddie comes up with. And, uh, you know, the pre-game chats and the post-game chats, I think is going to be lots of fun. And do you think that we're also in a, an all-win situation? Because if by some miracle Eddie does box a win, uh, we say we've got 14 guys sitting in Auckland. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Like I said, the phony war has begun. Do you agree with the twin system for these in the World Cup year for these first two teams? Yeah, look, I think if you're not going out to win the rugby championship, then it makes sense to give everyone as much game time as possible and to show as little of your hand as possible. What they're doing does make sense. Would you have kept the squad all together in South Africa in terms of unity and let them all go together? Mm. Or would you think there's merit in sending them earlier? See, the nice thing about having a team that is a mix of a and B team players is that you never you never send out a B team against anybody. You've got some continuity, you know, there's some there's some residual holdover from how you play in every team. So and nobody feels like they're playing in the B team. So the narrative isn't this is a B team. So there's I think there's merit to it. And if you look at um, if you look at the All Blacks, they've taken 32 players to Mendoza. They've got to fly back from Argentina, only get home by Tuesday. Mate, tell us about us. Mendoza. I mean, great place. Dan Van Salem and I had a great time there. Uh, when the, uh, in 2000, 
I think he was the uh, vice captain of the midweek Springbok side. We played Argentina A there, Lawrence Parker started that night and uh, we won just and then we went out and Dan can play the guitar and he can sing, it was wonderful. What did he sing, man? I, I don't know, but we were speaking Spanish when we went. <laughs> We were fluent. John Sicardo. We were fluent, mate. So, uh, Mendoza, All Blacks, it's going to be a good test. Uh, who have you got to win there? Uh, I think the All Blacks will do it. Well, I don't think it'll be too comfortable, but I think they'll do it. All right, I've got the All Blacks to win in Mendoza. I think it'll be a, a really good first 50 minutes, but I think the class of the All Black backs will show. Mm. And I've got the box to win. I've got the box to win in Pretoria by a comfortable 12. I'm looking at a 34-22 win. <laughs> Uh, I like how you did the calculation. So you both agree, Wallabies 22 points. 22 points, yeah. I think 22 is their number. 22. And we just get 23 win the test. Exactly.